Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 23 in our newbie to ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'm gonna help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. All right, we're pretty well into the series at this point. And I have to imagine by video 23, you're probably well on your way to creating projects and writing music in Logic Pro. And if you're writing and producing, you're probably spending a little bit of time also arranging your different recordings and ideas. So today I wanna to show you a number of different arrangement features that can be really helpful when you're working on and arranging your songs and productions. First, we're gonna take a look at an area in Logic Pro that we really haven't explored yet. And that is the global tracks. The global tracks can be found at the top of the tracks area just by clicking on the show hide global tracks button. We can also use key command G on our Mac's keyboard to show and hide the global tracks as well. And there's several different global tracks that you can introduce. We can see there's a global track for arrangement, markers, signature, and tempo. But if we right click on a mouse or trackpad or hold control and click, there are several other options you can introduce or remove such as movie, transposition, and beat mapping. Let's click on transposition to introduce it. And then by right clicking or holding control and click, we can remove it. At the top is the arrangement global track. And this is to introduce a handy tool for arranging called arrangement markers. If we hover our mouse over this plus button in the right hand side, we can create an arrangement marker for our project. Now we've created an arrangement marker titled intro. Let's create a few more. So now we have verse and we have chorus and then bridge. And with arrangement markers, we can easily click, hold and drag and then move it before or after another arrangement marker. And when we let go, every region beneath that arrangement marker is then moved to another location in our project. So obviously you can see how easy and quick it can be to start rearranging your projects to test out different arrangements. I'm gonna use key command Z to undo Let's deselect. We can also adjust the length of any arrangement marker just by hovering our mouse over the boundaries of each arrangement marker. So let's say maybe this is the bridge down here. And if we adjust the chorus to about there, and then we'll say, this is the verse and that's the intro. Right, so if we grab the bridge arrangement marker, click, hold and drag it before the chorus marker, we've now moved everything under the bridge marker before the chorus. And what's super cool is if we load a new drummer track, I'm gonna use key command option command N, select the drummer track type. I'll select perhaps an alternative drummer. Click create, watch this. Oh man, I'm gonna close the library using key command Y and the editor using key command E. As you can see, Logic has gone ahead and populated this project and the length of each drummer region is equal to that of the length of our arrangement markers. That is so awesome. You can also change the name of any arrangement marker by clicking on the title. And from here, we could either choose a different suggested title or we can give it our own unique name. So I'll call this arrangement marker awesome because it truly is an awesome thing. And if we select an arrangement marker and press delete on our Mac's keyboard, we remove all the regions beneath that marker. And then if we press delete again, we eliminate the space between the verse section and the chorus section. The chorus section is then shuffled to the left to meet up with the rest of our production. So clearly arrangement markers are amazing. The only drawback that I see for arrangement markers is if we hide the global track lanes. So let's use key command G. And now our arrangement markers have disappeared. So I've hidden the global track so I have more screen real estate for my regions and tracks. I still wanna see the marker so I know which section is which. Well, let's press G again. Well, let's now go to the marker section, which allows us to introduce markers to our project as well. Markers are purely for navigation. And by pressing this plus button, we've added marker number one. If we close the global track lanes, we can see marker one in the ruler above our tracks. From here, we can name this marker by double clicking on the title. And we'll call this awesome as well. We can move the marker by clicking, holding and dragging to wherever we need it. And if we hold command and click, the length of the marker is adjusted to wherever our mouse is placed. All right, so now we have this marker to signify this section right here. 
But most likely, you're probably going to want your markers to be identical to your arrangement markers if you're using arrangement markers. So let's select this marker and press delete. And let's now go to the marker heading in the global tracks and then click. And from here, we have some convenient features that allow us to create markers from our arrangement markers. And look at that. We now have four markers for each arrangement marker. You can also assign a color to each marker as well. If we use option C to bring up the color palette, let's just go ahead and give each of these markers their own color. And the same can be done for our arrangement markers. Let's now hide the global tracks. All right, now we know where we are in our project. Next, we have the cycle range at the top of the tracks area. Of course, the cycle range should not be new at this point. We've talked about it several times through the series. If we press play, the playhead will begin playing from the cycle range start point. And when the playhead gets to the end of the cycle range, it loops back around. Here we go. Right, this makes the cycle range a really helpful tool as you're writing a recording but the cycle range can also double as a skip range. Check it out. If we hover our mouse over the yellow cycle range and hold command and then click, we've now flipped the cycle range into a skip range. And now if we hit play, we'll see the playhead. Once it hits bar nine, skip right over to bar 21. Isn't that awesome? So if you're not sure about a section of your project, you can use the cycle range to completely skip that part so you can see how maybe going from part A to part C might sound. And to revert the skip range back to the cycle range, just hold command and click. Beautiful. All right, so we have tools for arranging the project, for noting which section is which, for skipping areas of our project. But what do you do if you wanna repeat a section or copy a section somewhere else or even add a bit of silence in between sections? Well, let's take our mouse and go up to the control bar on the upper left-hand corner. Now let's now open the toolbar. The toolbar provides easy access to some common features that you may likely use again and again. If you hover your mouse over the toolbar and right click or hold control and click, we have the option to customize the toolbar with which you can introduce and remove different options. But for today's video, the most interesting part are these four buttons right over here on the right-hand side that are called repeat section, cut section, insert section, and insert silence. Check it out, based on where our cycle range is in our project, whether it's enabled or disabled, if we press the button for repeat section, everything directly beneath the boundaries of our cycle range, which includes regions and markers, have been copied and pasted to the right of the original placement, and everything else in our project has been shuffled to the right to accommodate this new section. And if we open the global track lanes, we can see there's also a new marker, an arrangement marker for the section. Let's set the cycle range somewhere else in our project. Maybe to that length. If we now go to cut section and click, everything that was beneath the boundaries of the cycle range has now been cut and removed from the tracks area. We'll leave the cycle range there. I'm gonna disable it just to illustrate that it doesn't matter if it's enabled or disabled. And now let's place the playhead at the end of our project. If we go up to insert section, in this case, everything beneath the cycle range has been copied to the location of the playhead. And lastly, let's set the cycle range maybe to right here and go to insert silence. Now we've added some silence to the section of our project and everything that was beneath and to the right of the cycle range has been shuffled to the right to accommodate this new section of silence. These four buttons right here are incredibly powerful to help you arrange your projects. And don't forget, if you hover your mouse, a help tag will pop up and we'll let you know of any associated key commands. So do be sure to get to know the key commands for repeat section, cut section, insert section, and insert silence. Lastly, I'm gonna get rid of just about everything in our project. And we're gonna hone in on just these couple of regions right here. And let's just solo maybe our base region. Let's take a listen. The last arrangement tools that I wanna to bring to your attention can be found in the inspector or more specifically, the region inspector. Let's press key command I to open the inspector. If you take a look, there are two different inspectors within the inspector called the region inspector, as well as the track inspector. 
And obviously there are many different functions within each inspector, but at the top we have this option to either enable or disable the looping function. So check it out. We've now looped the space region to the end of our project. Of course, you can hover your mouse over the loop section until you see this loop icon and adjust the length. But for a quick and easy way to loop your regions, we can just click on this checkbox or use key command L. After that, we can transpose our region either in semitones or sense. So if we take a listen to this bass region, let's pitch it up by about six semitones. And this works for any audio region or MIDI region as well. And lastly, if we go to the bottom of the region inspector, we can click on this more dropdown. And from here, we can easily reverse our audio regions. Check it out. Just with a click of a mouse. Look at that. Between the arrangement markers and markers, the skip cycle range, the toolbar and region inspector, it's effortless for rearranging the different sections of your projects. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week in our newbie to ninja series. Take care.